All right, and welcome to another series from the World Team League. As uh, Clem is facing off against Zown. Speaking of Zown, he's that guy at the top right. Zown. And his opponent once again spawning in the bottom left corner for the team, for Team Liquid, it is Clem. Yeah, so the thing with these World Team League, I think that they're, that they're infamous for is their really, really quick player introduction. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like you, you gotta, you gotta get right into it off the bat. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I think that Zown is also pretty quick himself, going for a you know pretty quick probe scout, and it will actually scout out the semi proxy barracks. Zown a little bit too smart for Clem. Catching out that uh, SCV on the low ground and you know seeing for himself, hey, my opponent is not actually going to proxy me. They're just trying to fake me out. So very yeah. well played by Zown in the early game. Yeah, and many might think that it's not quite significant. Like, uh, it's, it's nothing. It's just, uh, you know, just scouting, just confirming, you know. Uh, but actually, it does actually sometimes make a difference because that could be the uh, the difference between a Protoss making a Zella off the bat to help defend a potential real proxy, or they can uh, scout, of course, as uh, Zan did, and know, okay, it's not actually an imminent threat. I can skip the Zella, go for the uh, quicker Nexus, and um, know that I'm, I'm pretty safe. Yeah, definitely, because that Zealot, not only is it expensive, you know, every Zealot costs 100 minerals, but, you know, it's it's just not a good unit for Protoss in the early game. Every single uh, Terran Barracks unit is able to outgun it um, because they have range, whereas the Zealot is a melee-only unit. But also, Zealots without charge are actually pretty slow, I believe. So, you know, Reapers are going to run circles around them all day. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the most unfortunate thing for the Protoss uh, if he makes the Zealot to just walk across the map because he knows that, okay, I'm not going to, I don't have to really defend with the Zealot, so I'm going to go ahead and try to attack. But then you come across, you know, the Reaper and then the Reaper just like out micro and like out kites the Zealot and then you pretty much invested 100 minerals for nothing. Yeah, definitely. Now we do see that Zaun is going to try to get a little bit aggressive here in the early game. We do see a Twilight council about two-thirds done on the other hand clem is going for a lot of uh well not a lot but three reapers and a hellion so i what, what do you think is this more for aggression or is this just to be you know like extra safe yeah this is actually pretty interesting because you don't really see terran goes for three reapers off the bat right, um, right but i think this is mainly just to try to break the front uh using the grenades uh and then you know run the hellion and the reapers by and uh, so far, no grenades being shot. Okay, there we go. That's the grenade. How many probes mm. can he get, though? So far, two have gone down as well as an adept. Oh, very cute, those probes. Trying to see what they can do against the two Hellions. Now, one Hellion does finally fall. Last Reaper is going to get out of there. But this Hellion is kind of smelling blood. It really wants to get that low health probe. <laughs> Unfortunately for the Hellion, there is a shield battery already in place in the main. And it will keep that last probe alive. At the same time, a proxy robo is coming out on the southeast side for Zaun. So it looks like that this glaive opener is looking to be a little bit aggressive, and I kind of like it. Oh wait, I think the oh no the okay yeah it's actually a proxy gateway. It looks like the robo was made at oh, the my nexus. Um, That's right. And it looks like he is going to go for a, a timing attack now. He did got this twilight council um, on Clem's part, but. He doesn't realize that it is going to be Glaive instead of Blink. Usually Blink is the the go-to opening upgrade. He's probably wondering, and especially he's scanning that Stalker in the front. He's probably thinking, okay, this is going to be a standard Blink uh, upgrade opening. But instead, it's actually a Glaive opening. Uh, so a bunch of Adepts being more, uh, warped in at the Proxy Gateway area. And this might actually catch Clem off guard. Oh yeah, definitely. Now we do see a Raven, a Bunker, and a Tank all in place, but here's the thing, if the natural, if the main wall doesn't go up in time, and Adepts are allowed to shade in between back and forth, oh, but here we go, the Adepts are just going to complete the shade into the natural. Already so many STVs going down, 
the walls will be raised at the main, but that tank is doing some work. So all in all, it was something like, what, eight Adepts traded for eight SCVs. Now, do you think that's worth it? I'm I'm not sure if that was worth it. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think it might have been too worth it. Although, I mean, in the end, it might have been, uh, been broken even, but I would say maybe he probably should have wanted or he definitely desired uh, more SCVs. Um, unfortunately, his... His adepts were clumped up, and th that tank there at the back, or at the uh, I guess the front rather, at the natural did so much splash damage, and I think uh, he could have gotten a lot more SCVs, but with the clumped up adepts going down to the tank, uh, yeah, I, I would say yeah, a little bit of a, a, a favorable trade there by Clem. Now, if there was a one unit that can trade basically perfectly. It has to be the Disruptor, right? There's no other unit. I love Zaun, and I love everything that he does, and especially this. <laughs> Our Blue Protoss is going Blink Disruptor after an Adept <laughs> follow-up. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Zaun, really good in his Disruptor control, so I, I'm not surprised. Um, however, it's really gonna come up to, or come up, uh, come down to the disruptor micro because blink stalker is not historically a great composition to go up against what clem is going for which is a uh, marine marauder and tank uh so it's gonna he's gonna really have to rely on his disruptors in order to go, get those uh significant uh connections um but yeah we'll, we'll see uh yeah we'll see how he, he does with them now, I wonder what the ratio of Marines to Marauders produced is ideal against Protoss. I, I, I would assume that the ratio is a little bit... Oh, that is so unfortunate. A Disruptor gets caught out in the middle of the map, doesn't even have enough time to fire before it gets gunned down. That is not how you want to open up against Clem. Another Disruptor air balls. We do see a pretty decent force field, but it actually kind of worked against the Disruptor. And shield battery overcharges popped. Dude, look at this. I don't think there's enough. I don't <laughs> think there's enough. We just see a bunch of stalkers struggling to fire on the bio. The tanks and the mines in the back are just destroying whatever's left. Eight probes uh -huh. are going down. Nexus gets uh, sniped. And even the pylons, so no warp ins are possible anymore. This is a disaster. Uh, we do see a Colossi, uh, Colossus pushing back the bio for um in the time being but overall clem just took a huge lead yeah i mean taking down that third nexus while clem does have his own third command center um an oh actually a decent uh disruptor hit there uh should be able to clean up the tank but there are still a couple of units down on the ground and uh looks like for the time being he will retreat but i think he's done enough damage oh yeah Definitely. I mean, even though Zaun is up by four workers, number one, four workers is not a lot. And number two, Zaun does not have a running third. So he is essentially on two base eco, whereas his opponent, a Terran, is on three base. It looks like uh, Clem will be setting up for yet another push. This could be it. I would say that this this we are about to see GG in just a minute or so, because that number of Marauders against basically pure Stalker, along with a Colossus, but against mostly stalkers it's not going to look pretty for the protoss yeah especially since he has no disruptor to speak of at the time or at the time right now he's trying to remake it but all his disruptors were killed in the last big engagement so he doesn't even have any like comeback mechanism of any sorts right now to deal with this uh, army that is knocking at the front door gonna break through into the main house and uh, drop right in Ooh, this is an excellent doom drop. Widow mines are gonna get set up. The the bio is just gonna have basically free reign for a little bit. Actually, the Colossi do get here pretty quick. Ooh, a nice blink forward. They are gonna pick off the. I think that was an empty medevac, so a little bit unfortunate. But you know, Zaun obviously trying his best, trying to stay in this game, trying to see whatever he can do. But yeah, it's like you said. You know, the disruptors. If Clem continues playing the way that he plays, there should be no way that the Disruptors allow Zaun to catch back up. Yeah, Clem is actually one of those uh, Terran players that does 
decently well in terms of splitting up against the um, disruptors to make sure he doesn't get hit by the splash damage of the disruptor. And oh, nice flank here from the left and from the right. Oh. Gonna catch this Protoss army off guard. Colossus is being sniped down. One last Colossus gonna go ahead and take the fall. And I think this is it. Yeah, GG is about to be called, I think, you know. There we go, GG is called. Clem takes this first game very decisively, very well played. All right, so I'm gonna be on uh, Blackburn here, which is a pretty interesting map. Um, I don't think it's as, I guess, uh, important or much, much as much of a factor as it is against maybe a Zerg player, but I think uh, you know it tends to have some pretty normal opening. Not not a lot of shenanigans has occurred. Uh, on this map uh, between Protoss and Terran. So uh, for the most part, at least from my history of casting, uh, it has been pretty normal openings. It looks to be the case in this one as well. Yeah, that's right. The probe is, of course, going to get into the main scout and see what it can do at the natural as well. Trying to block the command center just for a little bit. Of course, there will be two SCVs on the lower ground to shoot it off, but yeah, that probe is going to scout hate. Not, uh, or, well, exactly like last game, my opponent is not actually proxying anything. I am free to just, you know, make sure I get my cyber core out, get my second nexus up and running. And it looks like it's going to be, what is that, an adept first for Zound. So a little bit more of a, well... What would you say? Is this for scouting or just to defend against the Reaper? Because of course there is a Marine first rather than a Reaper first. Yeah, I think uh, well it can serve as a as a defensive uh, option for the Reaper, um, but I fully expect that Adept to go across the map and kind of scout while the Stalker or the second Adept that is uh, being made from the Gateway will go ahead and defend at home. Um, looks like it's going to be a Stargate opening though. And mm. will Clem be able to scout this? He uh, Zan does have a nice little wall there. So it kind of blocks the Reaper. He has to kind of go all the way around. And it looks like the Reaper yeah. won't be able to scout. Oh, at <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a dance. Clem, well known for his micro. Just trying to see what whatever he can bait out from the Adept. But yep. Like you said, we have a very nice wall in Zound's main. Gonna make sure that the Stargate is not scouted, and it will be a Void Ray first. So, hmm, I I'm not too familiar with the matchup, but I I still have to say that any Void Ray that shows up unexpected is a pretty deadly Void Ray. <laughs> you make it sound like the Void Ray is like the Green Re uh, the Grim Reaper is like <laughs> death comes with it or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a really odd choice though, because when you see Protoss opening up with a, a Void Ray, it's usually like a proxy Stargate of some sort. You don't really see it like kind of normally normally open uh, back at home. Uh, usually it's like a Phoenix or a, a Oracle if the Stargate is being right. made in the back of home and it's just kind of a normal opening. But yeah, re really interesting choice here by Zan to go for uh, the Void Ray and not just a Void Ray but a second Void Ray so he is going to tag along with his brother to see if he can kind of find some damage but the element of surprise has been thwarted has been thrown out the window and it uh, looks like Clem is fully prepared for these Void Rays yeah speaking of Void Rays plural a third one is on the production tab so I would not be surprised. Okay, we, we do see Zaun is expanding, um, but I was going to say, like, do you think that Zaun would go for Void Ray speed? Because I... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, it will be a robo follow-up. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe if there was a second gateway and he was mass-producing Void Rays, like going all in in it, then I could see him going for Void Ray speed, but... Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm still a little bit scratching my head a little bit with, with this opening here. Hmm. 
I guess this, it might be a, like a new build or something that he wants to try out. Uh, however, this is the playoffs. This means that every game does matter. And so I don't expect them to be experimenting with b new builds or unproven builds uh, at this stage of the tournament. But who knows? Maybe he had, fo he had found success with this uh, three void rate opening in ladder or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. It is pretty curious. I was about to say, you know, maybe it's a good way to keep the Zerg on the, uh, excuse me, <laughs> not the Zerg, to keep the Terran on the back foot, you know, prevent any widow, um, any mind drops from coming up. But the thing is, a Phoenix would be better for that, and an Oracle would be better, better to scout out that kind of thing. So maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also puzzled, just like you are. Now, I'm not sure if Zaun is going to have time to react to this. He will scout out in the middle of the map that there is a Bioforce coming across... Um, but the Robo Bay is not going to be done in time to have any, you know, Colossus out or anything like that out in time. So for now, it is going to be the pressure is on Zound to hold off this attack. Yeah, now the good news for him is that this map has a kind of the layout. It means that the shoe battery can be placed where it can protect both the dirt and the natural. Um, so you just got to park your army like in between and then uh, as well as the shoe battery. So. Uh, that allows him to kind of cover the front, but he does have to worry about covering the uh, the main base where Clem can very well drop his forces onto. So uh, you, army positioning is going to be really important here. And here we go. It looks like Clem has the same idea and we'll go ahead and go forward with this drop. Yeah, again, we're seeing a pretty Marauder heavy army to try to counter whatever... Zaun has now the widow mine. The first widow mine is going to get a pretty de decent hit, but the main Protoss force needs to go back down to the low ground. The main bio force is going to catch uh, Zaun a little bit out of position. The Colossi do finally come down. Void rays are going to also fire on whatever they can. First void ray does go down. Probes are now being evacuated. I'm not sure if that was mm, all too necessary, but stalkers are ready for yet another doom drop. But is it going to be enough? We do see. Four medevacs full of units dropping into the main, and that was a little bit unexpected. Zaun obviously caught off guard. Oh no! <laughs> Pylon gets sniped down, depowering basically everything uh, that Zaun needs at this moment. Probes are going down as well. This is not looking good for our blue Protoss. Yeah, I mean to be fair, whenever you have your Artosis Pylon being sniped down, it's it's never a good, <laughs> it's never a good place to be in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he's uh, he's kind of reeling a little bit here as he is going to be trying to stabilize. Now this time around, he will have the Colossus, um, but Thermal Lines is so far away from being researched and completed that I'm not sure it's going to be quite in time for this next big attack. Oh, definitely not. We see that Clem is already knocking on the front door. It looks like he's going to... No, okay, he's just going to poke and prod. Pretend that he's, you know, about to go up the main, bait out some shots, bait out the prismatic alignment from the Void Rays. Yeah, now, you know, Thermal Lance is going to finish in just a little bit, but the upgrades for the Protoss are so far behind. Plus one attack is just about to start when plus one armor uh, is just about to finish, and it just finishes. So now Bio, the red Bio is on 1-1, one, one, whereas the Protoss army still has yet to have any upgrades. Yeah, and also, it looks like Clem has added the Ghost Academy, so that means he's going to be kind of already ahead in terms of countering any attempts to go for High Templars or Archons. Uh, so, yeah, he just needs to make sure he has enough Vikings and Marauders to deal with the Colossus, and the rest, he should be fine. Yeah, Clem definitely playing a little bit more passively this game, recognizing that he he does have indeed a huge lead. I mean, we see, uh, you know, four bases up and running versus Zaun not even having built a fourth yet. Now we do see a Templar archives coming down, and you know, if there is one way that Protoss can come back into this game, it's by having a tech advantage. But again, with three ghosts producing at a time, <laughs> I don't think that there's going to be a window. Uh, where the Protoss has a tech advantage for too, too long. Yeah, this is, uh, e even if he does get some High Templars out, 
Uh, he's his storm tech. I don't think it's gonna be quite in time uh, for this uh, uh, for this army that is moving across the map right now. And uh, yeah, this is this is uh, looking quite dire for our protoss. He's gonna need the perfect, and I mean the most perfect engagement in order to hold off against this uh, force here. Yeah, definitely. Now, Widow Mines are going to start borrowing. We do see the ghosts coming forward. Uh, EMP doesn't get too much other than a couple of stalkers. They are healed up by the shield battery. Shield battery overcharge is popped. Disruptor from the natural does whiff a little bit. Or not whiff. I hate saying whiff because it makes it seem like it was the Protoss player's fault. And that's not really what I mean. <laughs> it just <laughs> means like, hey, it didn't hit anything. It was an air ball. Like, and that's okay. Uh, but anyways, more EMPs are going down. Colossi in the back are starting to fall. But... You know, the, the writing's on the wall, like, all you have to do is look at the supply. The, the soup never lies, right? The soup does not lie. More <laughs> Colossi are being targeted down. Stalkers are finally starting to fall. Disruptors join up with their Archon brethren, but is it going to be enough? Clem with the excellent pullback, excellent splits, making sure that he does not lose uh, too much to the Disruptors. Archons are finally starting to fall as well, and the supply is just getting more and more in favor of Clem. Wow, that was an excellent snipe on the Disruptor before it fires. I think we're about to see a 2-0. Yeah, it looks very much like it. And there we have it. The GG is called by Xana. Clem, he's making it happen as the photographer in the back <laughs> takes the picture of the winning moment. 